We're now joined on the Sports Mix by the head coach of the Muscleman Appleman, Brian Thomas. Coach Thomas, regular season comes to an end, unfortunately, with a loss, 41-10. to Your team, however, still makes it into the playoffs. But first, let's get into last week's game against Parkersburg and give us your thoughts on that outcome. Yeah, um, you know, played played a good team, played a really good team, and then, uh, you know, they were really explosive, and they hit some explosive plays on us. Um, you know, we we had four turnovers, and, you know, you're not going to win any game when you turn the ball over four times, which, you know, turnovers hasn't really been a problem for us too much this year, but, you know, it, it, when when you do when you do create them and you do have a game like that, it's really tough to overcome that. So, um, you know, when you, when you count counter in the big play explosiveness they had, um, and then us turning the ball over so much, you know, that's not a, that's not really a recipe for success. Coach, uh, your team though still finds its way into the playoffs at four and six. And I, uh, I would imagine some people are probably, I guess disappointed by that, or maybe feeling like they should have been in since they were five and five. But we talked about it before your strength of schedule and the rule change with that uh, helps you guys get in. And you look at it, coach. Uh, the worst record that you guys faced were two, three, and seven teams. Everybody else um, had a six-win season or better. So, uh, how do you think that prepares you for the playoffs? And I guess, do you think that rule will be addressed in the off season again, even though your team didn't have a winning record, still getting in? Well, I mean, I, I got a lot of – there's a lot of thoughts and comments. And, you know, I, I, I usually am pretty upfront and honest with you guys and, you know, try to not give you too much coach speak and coach's cliche. But, you know, I, I think a couple of years ago there were – uh, there were there were more. Uh, I think there were like three. The first year they dropped down a triple A. They they dropped the triple A numbers and they kind of re um, re shifted, uh, moved some teams down to double A. I think there were one year there were three, four, and six teams in. So you know it, it's it's not like it's never been done before, and it's not like you know there's actually been more than that in before. Um, you know the the. The next thing I'll say is it's, you know, it's not, if teams want to play, they can play. Um, you know, you can play anybody you want. So, you know, I'm not going to call any, any team out or any, anything like that or, or be super negative, but uh, we called many teams to fill our 10th game. Um, and some of the teams that we called were teams that did not make the playoffs that were close to making the playoffs. And, you know, we were told no by many teams, you know, oh, you guys have been pretty good and, you know, we, we think you're a little bit better than us. And, you know, we're not sure we can compete. You guys have been the tops in the state for a bunch of years. So we were told no by many teams, and that kind of led us to, to Cabell Midland. Um, so, you know, if, if teams want to, you know, adjust their schedule and fix their schedule, they, they can do that. You know, we, we've we never really shot away from competition. Uh, you know, we always try to play uh, anybody that we can. So, you know, it, it, it you know it definitely helped us that the new rule, the strength of schedule, strength of schedule rule. I really don't think it'll be addressed too much in the in the uh, off season. I'm on the coaches committee in the state of West Virginia, so I was in the I was in the meeting uh, where it was where we talked about the rule and we voted on the rule. I was I was in that meeting, so you know I don't think they'll change the rule after after just one year. Uh, you know, maybe maybe couple years down the road they can kind of address it and, and you know reevaluate it and look at it but you know I, I don't think it will be changed uh in the immediate future coach thomas at the beginning of the year the talk around your program was a uh preseason poll that picked you guys to be four and six and i know mm-hmm. that gave you guys a chip on your shoulder unfortunately you guys do fall to four and six Mm -hmm. at the end of the year so one they were correct but on the other side of that coin you guys are still a playoff team because of the strength Mm -hmm. of schedule and still have a lot of fight left in you i believe as well so just kind of give us your feelings on all of that mixed together yeah they they nailed it man so yeah you know yeah we did talk about that at the start of the year how you know we were we were a program used to being over 500 and uh, we wanted to be over 500, so you know we did. We did talk about that. Um, you know that was that was something that our kids talked about. But yeah, you know, unfortunately, it is what it is. And uh, the prediction, the four and six prediction, whoever made it, wherever it was posted at, um, they 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 kind of nailed it. So um, you know, it is what it is. It, it's you know I've said all year, not our expectations. Our expectations are to to be above 500. Uh, you know, we we've we've kind of. Uh, 
kind of got kind of got on good into the fortune here recently in, in the past several years, and we got to host some home playoff games. We got to finish top ten in the state, and that's a that's a big deal. Um, you know, unfortunately, we weren't able to do that this year. Uh, you know, which you know we'll address some of that stuff and look at some of that stuff and in, in, in the off season and try to continue to build and t- try to continue to grow in the future. But you know, as, as far as the playoffs go, you know, once you get in the playoffs. Uh, it's 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 open, man. You know, it's it's you get you get 16 teams in, and anybody can win it. I'm pretty sure that Fairmont Senior, I think they won the state championship a couple of years ago as a 16 seed. Um, you know, we 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 have living proof here. The 1995 team won the state championship as a 16 seed. So, you know, it's not like it it's not like it can't be done. You know, I'm sure back in 1995, you know, that was that was before. Um, the time I was here, but you know, I'm, I'm sure that some of the talk was, oh man, you got to play the South Har- that At the time, it was South Harrison. They're the best team in the state. You know, they're number one. You know, you guys, you guys barely got in. So I'm sure some of the talk was, you know, probably similar back in 1995, and it got done. So you know, we're we're happy to be in. Um, you know, it, it, it's tough to make the playoffs uh, in in the state. You know, I remember many years where. We weren't in the playoffs, and we were really hoping that we could get in. So, you know, we're happy to be there. Um, you know, and we're gonna we're gonna prepare. We're gonna get after this week, and we're gonna um, you know get a good game plan in. Our kids are gonna play hard, and we're gonna come out and, and give it everything we got. Last year, kind of a similar situation to this year in terms of you are playing a team that you already faced in the regular mm-hmm. season that you lost to, and last year you were able to flip a. 34-7 loss into a 28-23 win over Wheeling Park. This Cowboy Midland team a little bit different. Uh, obviously the number one team in the rankings, but like you said, it's been done before, so why can't you guys go in there and do it again? Um, is, is that in the back of your minds, knowing that you've had this experience before against a team that you played in the regular season where you didn't play your best the first time around but then came out in the playoffs and played better and got the win? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I, I think there's uh, I think there's some advantages in, in the playing a team a second time. You know, now having said that, it goes both ways because I'm sure they're, you know, they think the same thing as, hey, we can go back and watch that film and we can, you know, we can see how, you know, our kids match up with their kids and we can see, you know, can, can this kid block that kid? Can that kid get off that kid's block? So you kind of get to see, you know, you against them. So they're probably saying the same thing is, is you know, they get to watch that film too. But yeah, you, you know, I, I think there's, I think it's good to play uh, somebody again, just because you kind of, you know, you're familiar with, with with things. You know, especially in their, you know, especially in their case, I wouldn't think they would change much. They're the number one team in the state. And they've pretty much uh, beat everybody they played pretty soundly. I know they've lost one game, but uh, but yeah, you know, they're 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 pretty good. So they're really good at what they do. Uh, they have really good players. But uh, but yeah, you know, it, it is good to have that film to watch a little bit, like you mentioned. As we said, you guys played them a few weeks ago. Unfortunately, it was a loss, 42-14. to 14. But with that being said, what do you guys feel like from that game you need to do differently in this matchup to be on the winning side, potentially? You know, um, we, 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 have to, we have to sustain drives offensively. Uh, you know, the, the, the big thing in this game is their quarterback and their running back are really good football players. Um, you know, I, I think they're two of the better – uh, football players in the entire state. Uh, they're they're really really good. Quarterbacks one of the best quarterbacks in the state. Running backs one of the best running backs in the state. You know easily. So you know offensively we don't we don't want to come out and go three and out three and out three and out and just you know give them more possession. So you know we we got we got to be we got to be efficient with the football. Um, and at the same time you know when those kids have the ball in their hands we, we got to tackle them. You know they're 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 very tough to tackle. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, they're really good players. So, you know, they, they're, they're kids that can turn a five yard run into a 70 yard run in the blink of an eye. So, you know, we got to be able to tackle them and bring their, bring their dudes down, um, and limit their big plays. And coach, uh, four teams get into the playoffs back to back years from the EPAC. Uh, what does that mean to see the, uh, the conference represented so well and just the competition that's been in this conference the last two years? Oh, I, I say it every year, man. Every year, you know, I, I think we're one of the best conferences in the state. You know, we, we, I can speak to that because we played so many good teams throughout the state. So, you know, our, our teams that we have here in the Eastern Panhandle, um, you know, can stack up with anybody. 
Uh, and I, you know, I, I believe can go head to head with any any conference uh, there is. So you know, we, we we play really good football here, and that's a you know that's a um, that speaks to, to all the coaches uh, that we have in the area that do a really good job with their football teams. Uh, I know you know all of our teams are really well coached. So um, you know, definitely rooting for always root for our guys. You know, always root for the Panhandle guys, and uh, you know, excited to see another successful year from everybody. All right, Coach Thomas, before we let you go, get to our fun question for the week. And this week, it's just to have you tell us a little bit about yourself growing up and playing football, what positions you played, teams you played for, and some memories. Oh, man. Um, So last week's question – I, once we hung up, I thought about Jordy Nelson. Jordy Nelson's one of my favorite athletes. Love, love, love that guy. You know, great receiver uh, for the Green Bay Packers. So, want to go back and hit that one. Yeah, you know, growing up, um, um, I went to Hedgesville High School. So, um, you know, that that was that was my uh, playing previous playing career, which which I caught a little bit of slack when I when I came here to Martin or to, to when I came here to Musselman and started coaching. Um, yeah, so. Uh, you know, went to, went to Hedgesville. Yeah, I played I played defensive back. I played corner. Um, I played some like wing. Um, you know, some receiver, some running back. You know, kind of kind of like most wing backs, they can split out and catch the ball and can run the ball as well. So um, I returned returned some kicks. Um, you know, back in the day, back in the day, I had a little bit of speed to me. So um, yeah, you know, had, had some had some really good memories. Uh, you know playing uh you know play basketball as well too you know kind of shifting sports a little bit i played for uh played for dave lopez he was my coach at hedgesville uh football and then i played for kelly church in basketball and uh ran track too and, and my coach there was dan comer so you know i got influenced by some really good coaches um growing up some people that i looked up to that did a really good job that kind of made me i want to get in this profession as well all righty coach thomas appreciate the time and good luck this friday night Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me on.